Thanks for the support as a channel member, Michael McCloskey. No, I didn't expect this either. It's all, it's all getting a little bit crazy, isn't it? To genuinely be in a position where we might make it into the knockout rounds of the Europa League and to be second in the league. It's all, it's all moving a bit too fast. I, uh, because <laughs> you, you know, the next step is going to be me coming to you asking for a, asking for a little bit of extra transfer money so we can push on to the next level. No. Hello and welcome to part 29 of the Greek Odyssey. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you. Um, we're at home against Besiktas in the Europa League and against Ike in the Europa League. Since you were last with me, um, this is what's been going on. Um, we've actually had a really rather good run of form again. Um, we beat both Bronby and Besiktas away from home um, in the Europa League. So our Europa League group is currently looking like this. Three games in, we are top of the group, level on points with Milan and Besiktas. We play Besiktas and Milan at home in our next two consecutive games. We've got Besiktas coming up today. Our win against Besiktas is one is one foot into the knockout rounds. And then, of course, we've got Bronby at... I think, is it Bronby at home? No, Bronby away in our final game in the group. I would still expect Milan to top this group, but a win here against Besiktas, and we've got a very, very, very good chance of being the team that finishes second in this group behind, behind Milan, and then, which then, of course, sets up potential super fun ties in the knockout rounds because I think as a runner-up in the group we're then pretty likely to get a Champions League third place team is that right in the knockout rounds so things could be about to get messy but if we're still in Europe in February that's got to be seen as a as an incredible a cr incredible accomplishment for a team like Apollon um, bearing in mind we're doing this on a wage budget, um, well, okay, we spend we're spending ninety two, ninety three thousand pounds a week, but we're doing this. We're above Milan halfway through a Europa League group on a on a budget that you'd be unhappy with in League One in England. So this is this is an absolutely ridiculous overperformance that I'm very proud of. And um, in the league, we've also been winning games as well, apart from an away game against Olympiacos, who are the team that are top of the league. But we are second behind them. They've got a six point league. They're unbeaten. They've won eight from eight. It's looking like it's Olympiacos's year once again, as it usually is. But we're a, we're a solid second this time around, and you saw how our form changed towards the end of last year, and how we really, really started to accumulate points faster than Olympiacos were. And if we do pick up the form again once we're out of Europe and really start stringing together victories, who knows what could happen? A six-point gap is doable. We are already eight games in, though, so <laughs> let's see how big the gap is once we get to the point where we're, we're separated off into the championship group, which we've got to feel like we're, we're pretty confident that we're going to be in that championship group. Hopefully our days of flirting with the, user, the loser group are long behind us. And as you can see as well, final piece of good news, Marola, top scorer in the division. Who needs Damien? I mean, we'd take him back in January if the offer was there. But for now, we love Marola. So let's get into the game against Besiktas. Uh, this is the team that we're putting out there. We've got Brunoli in goal. A back four of Giannoutsas, Kios, Lawson and Breno. Labru at the base of the midfield. Singh and Slattery ahead of him. And then Jura, Emanolidis and Marola as our front three. Let's get into this. Let's hopefully pick up a win. Because like I say, a win here and we're all but through. Because we'll have done the double over Besiktas at that point. Unless they go and beat Milan again. Because they, they the ridiculous thing is, they beat Milan. So we beat Besiktas at their place, but they beat Milan at their place. So, yeah, there's, there's always the chance that we could beat Besiktas here whilst Milan beat Bronby. But then in the next round of games, or the final round of games, Besiktas could beat Milan again. It, it's all, I mean, it, it's tight. You know how these groups where you get three teams equal on points are. It, it is going to be tight, but we just need to make sure that we do well. If we can do well against Besiktas, who we know we can beat because we've already beaten them, it doesn't really matter what happens against Milan because we'll be the second best team in the group. Hopefully, as long as we don't mess up against Bromby. Right, we have an early corner here. Less than two minutes on the clock. It's Jura going across to take. It's an in-swinging corner looking for Marola at that far post. Can't find it, but Emanolidis does well to grab the ball. Um, and Cross does finally make it over to Marola, who couldn't quite get there before the Besiktas defender. And now they've got a counter-attack on and we need to get in there. And Ryan Lawson does exactly that because Ryan Lawson is good at doing defending. 
It's it's one of my favourite things about him. He's very good at doing defending. Um, Emin Alidis looks like he's pulled a hamstring. We're going to keep an eye on his on his condition as soon as we can have a proper look at it in a second. But he might well be coming off sooner rather than later. There's no use trying to get him to play on a pulled hamstring. Although he's in there and very nearly opened the scoring. Would he have scored if he'd have had two good legs? So, he's, I mean, he's on 85, 86% condition at the moment. I don't think that necessarily means he needs whipping off straight away. Um, what does it say? A potential thigh injury. If his condition starts to drop again, like it just has, right? Okay. Like it just has. Now he needs to come off. So, Baja can come on for him. Hopefully, it's not too serious an injury for Eminolidis. But you know how dodgy hamstrings can be. If he's actually pulled it, that could be him out for a little while. And um, Brunoli was a little bit out of position there. But Kios with a wonderful saving tackle to come across. I mean, that it didn't matter. Kios... Kios and Lawson together are a fantastic defensive partnership that I'd love to keep together for many, many, many years. I don't know how likely it is. Obviously, Lawson's only back here on loan. We'd love to bring him back permanently at some point. But Kios is getting better and better all the time. And the two of them together, this is what our good run in the league and in Europe is built on. Just how solid our two centre-backs are. They're both they're both too good for us, realistically. I know I said before, comparing our budgets to League One budgets, which is all well and good, but you don't get players like Lawson and Kios in League One uh, because they're just... They are, they're, they're both good enough to be playing European football for the rest of their careers now. Jura with the in-swinging corner, looking for Marola again, but he can't quite connect with it properly, um, but does manage to to grab the loose ball that was a result of it, but couldn't direct his cross correctly. It's now a counter-attack for Besiktas. We need those defenders to be in again. And Breno joining in the fun. And Baja as well. We are defending very, very well once again. The one worry I would have at this point is we're not looking very effective going forward. But our, our entire back line is looking very, very solid at the moment, which is lovely. Breno now with the throw, lobs it into the area, looking for Jura, who was lurking at that near post. Slattery finds Baja, who's now picked up an injury of his own, but it doesn't matter. It might matter. But for now, he's put it into the back of the net from the edge of the area. It's only a bruised shin. He ain't coming off for a bruised shin when he's already on as a substitute for someone who's done their hamstring. Come back to me when you've got a proper injury. If you can do this with a bruised shin, you can do anything with a bruised shin. That is a lovely finish, and it's just the breakthrough we needed. Just before half time, 43 minutes on the clock. It's a pollen one, Besiktas nil, and we've looked like the better team, which is awesome. Don't get complacent. Do not get complacent. How are Milan doing? Milan are also beating Bronby. Um, so they have we got a latest score there? Milan, no, it's oh no, there you go, 2 0. So Milan 2, Bronby 0. So Milan moving above us as it stands. A draw here does leave us in a precarious position, really precarious. We, um, <laughs> we're gonna need to, we're gonna need to make sure we beat Besiktas because we're definitely gonna lose to Milan in the next game while Besiktas are thumping Bronby, presumably. We don't want to get into the point, into the position where we have to go into that last game when Milan are already qualified, hoping they do us a favour, or knowing that we've got to beat Bronby 8 0 or something ridiculous like that because Besiktas already have. I would be very upset if we go out of this group level on points with somebody because we, we gave away a lead or something like that. If we're going to go out, let's get thumped. If we're going to stay in, Let's stay in. And Baja's in again. And for a man of a bruised shim, he's not doing too badly today, is he? A second goal for Baja. It's 2-1 on the night. Well, 2-1 on the night. There's no aggregate. It's just 2-1. I, I don't even know if it is night. Does it look dark? No, but the floodlights are on. So it probably is dark. But I don't know that it matters. What matters? What, matter, what am I saying? What matters is, it, is we're 2-1 up. And Baja's broken, but we've just got to keep him on because we don't... A, he's really dangerous today, and B, we don't have anyone else to really come on in his position. Excitingly as well, looking at the attendance, the attendance is way... I mean, it's almost double what the what the potential attendance, what the potential capacity for the new ground we we're looking at is. So again, hopefully it's going to be another step towards not having to play in a poxy little ground, um, which we are desperate to avoid. There is nobody who can come on for Baja, so he's just going to have to stay. I mean, I, in fact, that's... Maybe we could bring Simic on to play on the right hand side. It's not ideal, but I guess it's better than risking more injury. And Simic, Simic theoretically should be able to play out wide. He's 
He's quick. He's reasonably skillful. I think he can play out wide, even though supposedly he can't. Um, and for my last trick, Jura is going to come off, and we're going to bring we're going to bring Calavera on, and we're going to make it all make a little bit more sense. So Simic can go up front and do that. Calavera can come into the midfield. I know what I'm doing. It does make sense when we eventually get there. And we're going to do that. Just because we've broken our wing, so we might as well. Um, right, what's going on in the Milan game? They're still 2-0 up. We are looking a lot more precarious, although Besiktas now have got an injury when they were... So they're effectively down to 10 men at the moment, which is handy. Um, Janutsos with the throw, looking for... I don't even know who he's looking for there. Um, but Marola picks up the ball eventually. Marola dancing through the penalty area. He lost it and then won it back again. Lost it again, won it back again. But, I mean, he's wasting time, which is more important than anything. Giannoutsos does very well to get himself out of trouble there. It falls to Singh, who tried to play it forward looking for Marola. It was a poor pass, and now we're in a little bit of trouble. We need those defenders to do their thing again, and that's exactly what Ryan Lawson does. And that's some more very, very good defending. Besiktas, I think, on an average ability per player basis, are a better team than we are. But our defenders are so high quality that every time they've tried to get an attack going, we've just been there to snuff it out. Apart from that one, probably. But that is a very, very good victory. And we are looking good as we head, hopefully, towards a knockout round. Plus, every time we win, we earn all this money. I mean, half a million pounds for us, that's still massive money. This is huge, picking up these half million pound win payments. This European run's made us about five million quid so far. Long may it continue. So a couple of changes for the Ike game then. Uh, Baja comes in for Emenolidis um, on the right-hand side. He was less injured than the other injured guy. Um, and Kalapitas comes back in at left-back. He's now fit to come back into the team after not being fully fit for the uh, for the Besiktas game. And Drutsas also still not fully fit, so he still, he still misses out. He's I don't even remember what's wrong with him. Um, he's got, if I can find a way to click on his name. Learn the buttons, Kev. Pulled ankle ligaments. He's going to be out for another week or so yet. Um, but, I mean, it's a team that's just done very well against a team that is better than the team we're playing now, theoretically. So I'd like to think we should be able to pick up another win. So let's... Um, I am expecting... I mean, that's it's a ridiculous situation, really, to go to go against a team like this. I mean, it's it's the it's the original team, the Wim of Thwentu. Um, back when I was ignorant and still calling AEK Athens, like I imagine the majority of you will still expect me to, because that's how I think everyone says it in England. But I've been told it's 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 Powak, Ike and Offi. That's how you say them. Someone could be messing with me. The whole of Greece could be messing with me, but um our our Greek streamer friend um that we like to raid on Twitch sometimes. Um, he, he confirmed it is Ike. So if he says it's Ike, it's Ike. So let's, uh, I don't even remember. What, what was the point I was making at the start of that? Yes, that they're not as good as Besiktas and that we now expect to beat them, which is ridiculous because they're, they're a much bigger team than us, obviously. And they've just shown that by grabbing a goal early on. Europa League hangover. I can't even call that because... We haven't had a problem coming back into the league after European games at all. If we now do it in a video, it's just because we weren't very good in this match. It's nothing to do with the fact we're off the back of a European game. We haven't even travelled. It's two consecutive home games. <laughs> so I think we're probably just uh, just need to wake ourselves up a little bit. Show some passion, you rascals. We like playing the underdog. Maybe the fact that I've told them that we should win has put a little bit too much pressure on because Ike are the other team who are pushing it, or not exactly pushing Olympiacos, but challenging for that second Champions League qualifier spot that we got this year. Um, the, them and Powak are the other two who are realistically in the mix with us. Uh, Panath and Icos falling down the league might not even make the Champions group this year which would be a very interesting turn of events. We've basically repair, replaced them as part of what I guess would be a big four in Greece. Although we've been rubbish today, 2-0 down. 
in what you could say is a strong... With Kalapitas back in, I would suggest this is a stronger team than the one that's just played Besiktas. Played Besiktas. I was shouting about how good our defence was. And then we've come in and conceded two goals at home against this lot. We're now demanding more. This isn't acceptable. I, t I specifically said don't get complacent. And now we're getting complacent. This is the opposite of what everyone's instructions were. I'm not happy. Singh wins the ball back, but immediately gives it away. We need a goal back before half time here. And here's Slattery picking it up in midfield to try and drive us towards that. Finds Breno on the overlap, who gives it back. Oh, I thought he was giving it back to Slattery, but in fact, it's found Lebru, who finds Singh. Calapitas, lovely little first time through ball to Dura, who tries the shot when it probably is easier to cross. And Marola stood there in the middle, completely unmarked. Wondering what he's done to upset Jura. Uh, Breno gets the tackle in, but it goes out for a corner. And now it's not... Uh, no, oh, are, we, are we really having a penalty? He's going over to the little telly. I mean, it's not even in the area. They're both stood at least a yard outside of the penalty area. If this is given as a penalty, I'm giving up and going home. We'll let Mrs. Wearmouth manage for the rest of the game. No penalty. I was going to say, I mean, it's basically on the corner flag. Is it even a free kick? Okay, it is a free kick. And it was never that close to the penalty area either. Ridiculous. <laughs> right, we got away with it. We need to we need to sort ourselves out. This has been really poor. Let's have ten minutes of passion to finish off the half. We can't because we've we've already done too many shouts. I need to shout something else. My delicate voice box can't shout three things in a half hour period, despite the fact I've talked solidly for twenty five minutes for this video. Somebody get the tackle in, for goodness sake. I want to shout at you. We need this highlight to end. Ugh. It goes all the way back to their goalkeeper, hopefully. No, I thought the reason the highlight was happening is because they might be about to do something stupid and give us a goal. But they're just knocking the ball around. Are we? Get, is anyone going to get a tackle in? We're doing a lot of nice pressing, but it's not really effective. They're just tiring our players out at the moment by keeping hold of the ball. Short passing. They must have had... 40 passes without us getting the ball here. Well, well, we have been absolutely terrible in that first half. I am screaming and shouting and we're going attacking and we need to sort ourselves out. We only had two shots in the first half. Couldn't get hold. I mean, you saw at the end there, we couldn't get hold of the ball. How can we be so poor domestically when we've been so good all season. But how can we be so poor in this match when we were so good, so heroic against Besiktas? It's like we we used up all our all our trying hard for a week. <laughs> now we just need an easy game. That fella behind the goal in the green, he's having a lovely time. Right. Demand more. More. Come on. Kios is anxious. Not as anxious as I am right now. I thought we were going to actually be... In part of a title challenge this year. We're nine points behind after nine games. How do you drop a point a game against your title rivals at the start of the season? Because they're not because because we're not title rivals. That's why. That's how it's easy to do. Right. Panoli Panolius, who is the young seventeen year old who we looked at before the season started as a potential option, ended up not using him in the Euro Europa League qualifiers, sensibly, I think. But he is now going to come in and make his debut on that left-hand side and hopefully offer us something a little bit different to what we've had so far today. If he comes in and is a hero, then we've got a little bit more competition for places in the team all of a sudden. I've asked them to get creative, mainly because I don't want to put loads of pressure on the youngster who's just come on. Uh, Baja's also playing poorly, so maybe it's time to get Luris on and get him on as a target man and do like a lopsided a lopsided diamond it's like a, we're doing a, we'll call this the cubic zirconia this uh this this system it's a bit like a diamond but you can tell it's not we've, we've given away a penalty we've given away a penalty we've been rubbish in this game here we are inventing new tactics meanwhile Penalties being given away by what I've previously announced to be the greatest defence in the universe. Or words to that effect. More positively, even more fans packed into the Georgios Kamaras Stadium today. Nearly 15,000 people here. Mrs. Wearmouth, are you watching? You cannot be moving us to a 7,500 capacity stadium. We fill this place quite a lot now. Please don't ruin it. Please don't halve our income. 
Oh, Brunoli's a good boy. He is a good boy. If that had happened earlier in the game, that might have been something to spur us on to get back into the game. But I think it is probably a little too late now for us to drag ourselves back into this one. Lewis is in and... I mean, the one thing he's in for is his head in, and he he missed with a header. What is he for? Well, I mean, we've just been poor today. <sighs> Europa League hangover. It's a real thing. Promise. It's a real thing. That's what's. This is. This has been like the accumulation of all the hangovers we've earned. Oh, and I pressed the wrong button. I can't even press the right buttons anymore. It's gone that wrong. Ah, right. We will. We've got to go and play Milan now. I'm not going to show you that one because you've already seen us play Milan once. So what we'll do is we'll play a couple more games and then we'll come back uh, tomorrow for Bronby in what will probably be a qualification decider because um, I imagine we'll lose to Milan whilst Besiktas beat Bronby, which means we'll go into the final, the final round of games with Milan on 12 points, us and Besiktas on nine points. But with Besiktas playing Milan, but a Milan that's already qualified, it's all it's going to be all to play for. Um, and we'll do that in tomorrow's video. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.